We finally have toothpaste made from human hair, and it could repair our teeth. Hair contains a natural protein called keratin, and scientists at King's College London discovered that when keratin interacted with minerals found in our saliva, it formed a layer that protected teeth, mimicking real enamel. Tooth enamel, unlike bone and hair, does not regenerate. Traditional fluoride-based toothpastes are good at slowing degeneration down, but the keratin-based treatments were found to actually stop that process completely. They say it could be available within the next two to three years in both a toothpaste for everyday use or in a gel form that is professionally applied for more targeted repair. So the secret to fixing your teeth could be hidden inside your hair. This is the latest in science news. This is Mind Blow. The oldest known visual representation of a creation myth shown in artwork was discovered in the Palestinian West Bank on a 4,300-year-old silver goblet. The goblet is only about 8 centimeters tall, but shows two incredible scenes. In the first, a chimera standing over a small flower-like circle faces a large snake, and in the second scene, a much bigger flower-like circle with a smiling face is being held up by a humanoid figure, while the large snake lays on the ground. There are several cuneiform texts similar in age to the goblet that were discovered elsewhere in the Fertile Crescent that describe the gods separating from animals. So we know the inhabitants of the region had stories about creation when the goblet was made. The cool thing is that this goblet gives us a picture of what they imagined this creation to have looked like. Nice. If you've ever looked at a robot and thought, can I eat that, you are in luck. While edible robots are already a thing, their motors and batteries are toxic and probably don't taste very good. Now, in a new paper, researchers from Dario Floriano's Laboratory of Intelligent Systems at EPFL in Switzerland have demonstrated an edible robot with both ingestible batteries and motors. Here's how it works. The battery is made of gelatin and wax and contains chambers each filled with either liquid citric acid or baking soda separated by a membrane. With enough pressure on the chamber that contains the acid, the membrane will puncture, letting the acid slowly drip into the chamber with the baking soda. This activates the battery and starts producing CO2 gas and sodium citrate, a common substance found in all foods. The CO2 gas from the battery then travels through tubes made of gelatin in an actuator of soft robotic design. The actuator contains interconnected gas chambers on top of a base that bends with pressure. A single actuation happens when the actuator is pressurized, causing it to wiggle. For continuous wiggling, the CO2 gas needs to be released cyclically. This is made possible by a special ingestible valve. The ingestible valve works on a principle called snap buckling, meaning it normally remains closed, but under enough pressure, it starts to rapidly open and close, causing it to continually wiggle. Currently, this version of the robot operates at roughly four bending cycles per minute, lasting only a few minutes before its battery dies. They say a potential use for such a robot is providing medication or nutrition to elusive animals like wild boars. Because boars are attracted to live moving prey, so these small bots could be infused with something like a swine flu vaccine. And the actuators were actually served to humans earlier this year. Delicious. Well, here we go. The first mass delivery of humanoid robots is upon us. Ubitech's Walker S2 bots are capable of autonomous battery swapping. Its dual battery switching design lets the Walker S2 switch between single battery working mode and dual battery. By integrating battery swap stations with real-time monitoring of batteries, the Walker S2 can actually choose charge mode or battery swap mode according to task priorities. Standing at 176 centimeters and weighing 70 kilograms, its head is equipped with a pure RGB binocular stereo vision solution, enabling the Walker S2 to have, quote, human eye stereoscopic perception. Judgment day soon to follow. Here's the world's largest electric ship. Hull 096 is equipped with 5,016 lithium-ion batteries. Inket Tasmania, a shipbuilder from Australia, first unveiled Hull 096 in May of 2025, and it just started receiving electrical charge in October. The batteries are distributed between four rooms and are about 85% charged as of right now. Its battery system, which is four times larger than any existing ship, weighs 250 
50 tons. This ship's energy storage system is currently emissions free thanks to Tasmania's grid being run on 100% renewable energy. Once it passes its sea trials, its permanent home will be in Rio de la Plata estuary in South America. It's said to be able to carry 2,100 people and 225 cars per trip. And those sea trials are planned to start soon. It's bionic fish time. A group in China has built a flexible electromagnetic fin that can propel an underwater robot 1.66 body lengths per second. Fish are incredibly agile and adaptive, and trying to robotically mimic a fish's movement has been a challenge because traditional robotic fins are bulky and rigid, but soft actuators are actually too weak. The team designed and built a flexible electromagnetic fin with an elastic join that flicks back and forth with a little friction. The fin is built with spherical magnets and two small coils. Alternating current flowing through the coils creates an oscillating magnetic field that makes the fin swish back and forth just like a fish's tail. Now we just need Mega Man to fight one. And now we have lab-made blood? A University of Cambridge-led team developed a process in which clusters of lab-grown cells were encouraged to produce human blood stem cells, something that could greatly supplement blood donations to those with blood disorders like leukemia. They're calling these little blood-producing clusters hematoids, and just like umbilical cord stem cells, they're able to differentiate between red and white blood cells. The hematoids are made from donated human stem cells and developed beating heart cells to keep fluid moving after just eight days, and in two weeks, they produced blood. Not only is this method more self-sustaining, but it's much more efficient than prior high-maintenance methods that required regular supplementation. The process sheds light on how the human blood cells naturally form, can be used for medical advances to screen drugs, and model blood disorders. All of that seems very useful. Now here's the incredible launch of the Sega Saturn from 1995. Sega Saturn. Aww. Hit it! Sega's next-generation gaming platform, revolutionary sports and arcade gameplay, all with amazing new 3D experiences never before possible on home game systems. Wow. Sega Saturn. It's how you play the game. Bye. Bye. <laughs>